it seems too short. The Flame and the Flood is a survival rafting game, or a traveling survival game, according to the development studio Molasses Flood. Scout, the player's character, climbs on their raft and travels the Mississippi-esque river of whatever it's called in search of Aesop slash Daisy's home. The game is a roguelike. The river is procedurally generated. Death is permanent. However, this particular iteration of roguelike allows players to restart from checkpoints which is great. It allows the player to experience the same river as many times as they want before they move on. The Flame and the Flood is really good about giving you a journey. And by that, I mean you'll get plenty of stories, like that time that you got gored by a boar when you weren't looking, or that time when you ran into a car on a river, or that time when you met an old lady and she gave you a snare trap for a story. I mean, the game is charming as fuck, and it delivers on memorability. What is charm? Right, let's talk about charm for just a moment because I hear that word thrown around a lot. D admittedly not in video games as much. I hear it mostly when I watch those house hunting shows and they're describing whatever shitty house as charming and with character. Stop using those words. You don't know what they mean and you, you need to be more fucking specific. Sorry, that's not what we're talking about here. Let me move on. If I could be so lame, let me read the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of charming. 1a, to affect by, or as if by, magic, compel. b, to please, soothe, or delight by compelling attraction. Now, I think the second one probably is more appropriate here, but the first one feels more accurate. Molasses Flood has managed to develop something that feels a little like magic, and that's part of the charm of this thing. <clears throat> But, yeah, I probably ought to take my own advice from earlier and be a little more specific. So let's talk about how to make a game charming, or specifically how Molasses Flood has done so. And yeah, we need to talk about what makes this game charming, because the Flame and the Flood functions well enough as a survival game, and the game is technically sound, but those aren't the reasons I came back to it. I kept coming back because I wanted to see more. I wanted more of the experience, not just the mechanics. The experience is the charm of the game. They use interesting and unique aesthetic. The art direction is awesome. The art direction is awesome. The models in this game are weird. They're recognizable, but only in so far as, let's say a resemblance. That goes for cars and houses, but also people and animals. Like how Scout's face has a point, like a triangle in the front. Why? It's not important. The art department was looking for a quirky and strange abstraction that adds to the game. The color palette and the source material add into that as well. The Flame and the Flood reads like a, a demented version of Huck Finn with red-eyed monsters hiding in the trees and twisted branch conglomerates floating downstream. Nothing is realistic, nor is anything cartoonish. It's just weird, and that works perfectly. The soundtrack. The music in this game fits perfectly with the atmosphere. They alternate between instrumental and vocal songs, and that's a brilliant idea. The vocal songs, which are mostly Louisiana-style blues or folk punk, maybe? Yeah, I'm not great at genre-defining music, but they tend to bring some levity and perspective to the situation at hand. It's helpful, and it keeps the game from getting too serious. Besides that, how many games have vocal background music? The animation is charming. <laughs> the thing I want to talk about are the search animations. When you go to loot a car or a box or something, the whole object moves and shifts around, almost as though Scout is not just searching the trunk, but the whole thing. They're taking panels off, they're kicking the tires, they're making sure that they don't leave any part of it unturned. It's cute, and it's fun, and it's... Creepy. All of that fits the aesthetic. 
They use nostalgia. Nostalgia is a powerful driver in video games. It gets used to significant effect. For the most part, you see it as referencing past video game aesthetics, like how Shovel Knight works and looks like a Mega Man game, or The Binding of Isaac plays like the dungeon levels of Legend of Zelda. The Flame and the Flood uses the nostalgia of, say, Huck Finn novels, allowing you to travel a powerful river on a tiny raft. It reminds me of movies like A River Runs Through It or whatever movie Futurama was referencing in the episode where Bender tries making a robo fraternity cool. I don't have a lot of references that pertain to rafting. The idea that you could just hop on a raft and wait for the current to take you to your next destination, whatever that might be, it's a cool fantasy. I mean, the reality of actually doing that is probably horrible, but it sounds real nice when you see it in a movie. They made a sincere character. Scout is as close to a sincere character as I think you can get. They don't mutter quirky one-liners as they're gunning down boars or deliver monologues about the futility of survival in such a war-torn world. The game delivers Scout as a simplistic, honest character. Communication with others is clear and concise. They seem to have a kinship of some kind with Aesop slash Daisy but you won't find them asking Aesop slash Daisy for advice or singing with them like some sort of Disney princess. That's sincerity of a kind, a character who seems to be exactly what they are. What you see is what you get. They make their player character vulnerable. Vulnerability is a big deal in video games in that player characters don't really show it. A lot of games are about providing a power fantasy. And if power is what you seek, then stone cold, tough as nails, badass muscle men who have removed their tear ducts are what we seek. We don't want to see the Doom guy wreathing, wreathing? He's probably not very good. Uh, we don't want to see the Doom guy writhing around on the floor, whimpering about how much his tummy hurts after getting a fireball there. We want to see that son of a bitch take his death in stride. Okay, but that makes for some pretty boring characters because that's not how humans really are. Scout is an alternative. When they're injured, they limp. When they're nearing starvation, they have to lay down and the world gets all wonky. When Scout is near enough to death, they'll crawl around on the ground for a short while in hopes that you, the player, can craft something to save their life. Their humanity is charming. Not in a cute way, in an endearing way. They put a dog in there. Oh, dogs are charming. Dogs are hella charming. Not to mention old, wise-looking, helpful dogs. Aesop slash Daisy is cute, and protective, they're mindful, and they point stuff out for you. Aesop slash Daisy provides an incredible support and comfort, and they're just awesome. It would be charming enough to just have a dog in the game, but Aesop slash Daisy is also a huge positive to your experience. They're sort of like you're familiar in this strange world. They're also the little details that they put in there, like the quilts with the story notes attached to them, or the signs with the hints. The flame and the flood provides a passive story that helps engage you. <laughs> and the writing is fun and intriguing. It has charm. I mean, character? No, no, it. I don't know, it's just a really fun read. They include interesting folks. Uh, I mentioned the lady before uh, who trades you a snare trap if Scout agrees to tell her a story. There are also the feral children who believe in unity and peace. Interesting secondary characters make the story even more engaging. You're making friends. It's cool as shit, and I love the insight they provide into the world. So why is The Flame and the Flood worth your time? If you're just looking for another game to beat, I don't know, this might be for you. Who the hell can beat roguelikes anyway? If you're looking for a unique experience, this is it. The story arc is fun and unique. The game has charm coming out the wazoo, and there's no reason you shouldn't give this studio your money. Is the game perfect? No, of course not. It's probably not even the best designed survival game. But you shouldn't buy this game if you're looking for nothing more than a survival game. It's more enriched than that, and you'll enjoy it if you take your time with it. I've said that before. It's more enriched than that, and being on a raft is fun while you look at feral children.